Hey guys, and welcome to the latest tutorial video for Eve Echoes. So, some of you will have noticed in whether it be Discord, Reddit, in-game chat, you'll have noticed people talk about hauling stuff AFK. They might even use the word cargo scepter, such as uh, how I've written it on the screen in front of you. But um, what exactly is a cargo scepter? What is this AFK hauling that everybody seems to be doing? Uh, as you might have uh, been made aware yourself, if you pick up any regular ship and AFK fly straight through the game, probably through null sec, you're going to get ganked. Your, your ship is going to die. So how are people pulling this off? How are people moving the stuff they need from Jita to deep into null sec, perfectly safe and secure? Well, that's going to be the purpose of today's video. So we'll start at the very beginning. What AFK hauling is all about is essentially you you take your ship, preferably an interceptor frigate, you undock from the station with your autopilot set, and when you're in close to mid warp, so preferably when you're accelerating and you're going faster than one AU per second, you minimize the game. You don't quit the game and go for the safe logout, you don't close the game by, uh, you know, closing it through your mobile phone's app tray, as it were. Just minimise it. Just minimise the game whilst your ship is still accelerating at warp speeds. If you minimise the game when you're slowing down and you're below warp speeds, it's too late and there's a strong possibility that the first target that you're going to land on, that being the Stargate, you're just going to pause autopilot and sit there until someone kills you. So uh, if it's a very short leap between the gates or between station and stargate, hold off, don't minimise the game until you're a bit further along. Now it is important to reiterate that you need to be in an interceptor frigate to pull this off because you have no way of knowing how often you're going to be encountering bubbles. In every bubble that you go through AFK is a risk that you and your precious cargo are going to go boom. So yeah, first and foremost, interceptor frigate. Then of course with your autopilot set, minimise the game whilst you're accelerating to uh, or past 1 AU. So next up of course is when do you reopen the game? So typically within say 5 minutes or so, depending on your phone settings, of your ship arriving at the destination station, you will get a notification. Now that is when it is safe to reopen the game. If you reopen the game mid-transit, for example, depending on where you where your ship is at that particular point in time, things can turn out to be a little bit awkward for you, and of course you've got no way of knowing specifically where your ship is whilst the game is minimised. Um, just to give some examples of what can happen, if you get your timing perfectly right, and this is all potluck again, if you get it perfectly right, you'll load the game whilst you're aligning to warp out from your Stargate and there'll be no interruption whatsoever. Um, if, however, you don't get your timing just right and you happen to be mid-warp, for example, um, the ship will do this automatic recovery jump thingy where you'll land on the Stargate and then the game will go no connectivity weird stuff is going on here and instead of jumping you through the Stargate will warp you away from the Stargate to a safe point go hold on a sec he's in the game now I can put him back on the Stargate and then we'll warp you back to the Stargate and there is always a possibility that the game glitches out in that scenario and the autopilot doesn't turn back on. So you can safely reopen the game and change your autopilot, for example, uh, midway through your journey. But if you don't need to, don't do it. it it's an extra risk. Um, I've not had any problems doing this myself, but, uh, you know... If you're on an older device, you might encounter problems that I have yet to encounter on my Pixel 2, which is in itself a little bit old. But anyway, <clears throat> let's stop rambling. So next up, of course, we need to talk about the fittings for your ship. 
because it's all well and good jumping in an interceptor and, you know, flying up and down with expensive stuff in your holds. You want to minimise the chances of your ship actually getting caught and shot at. Now, to give a little bit of history here as to why my fittings are how they are, um, earlier this year, I, I can never remember if it was a Daredevil or a Dramiel. Uh, feel free to comment in the comment section below because th these two ships always confuse me, okay? They're too similar. Um, one of those ships had a really, really brilliant implant released and that implant essentially allowed them to alpha frigates that were uh, landing on stargates. So, of course, there was a craze whereby everybody had to start tanking their interceptor frigates so that they couldn't get hit uh, by this particular uh, form of ganking. Now, that has been patched over, so you don't have to worry about that at this point in time. But you never know when that patch is going to break or when a new exploit comes along. So, uh, at this point in time, it is not necessary to tank your interceptor frigates. But, however, I strongly advise you to do because you are essentially future-proofing yourself for when another particular exploit comes along for people to take advantage of. So, the idea here is... With your rigs and your low slots, pour in as much effective hit points into your ship as possible. If you can get your hands on a cheap general unit, for example, to uh, go alongside your shield extenders, do it. Me personally, I'm running a general unit that improves the passive boost from shield extenders. And then I've gone and fitted two shield extenders to um, max out my effective hit points. Uh, this particular screenshot I've got up on screen at the moment is a good example. Uh, there seems to have been a bug at the time that I took the screenshot because uh, there is no power grid on the screen. It, it looks like I've managed to fit two shield extenders without using any power grid whatsoever. I assure you that's not the case. But the next part of the fitting, and this is the bit that is important and is relevant to right now, is the align time or warp preparation time as it's referred to in game. As you can see on the screen, I have a warp preparation time of 0.92 seconds. So uh, the important thing to note there is it's less than one second. If your align time is greater by one, yeah, by one, wow. Well, if your align time is greater than one second, even by 1%, like 1.01, then, because of how server ticks work, it will take you two seconds to leave the gate. Now, enemy ships require one second, so one server tick, to be able to lock you. The second tick, they'll be able to shoot you on. So you want to stay within that one second, so that it doesn't matter how high their scan resolution is. Because of the nature of the server ticks, they cannot lock you and shoot you because those are on two separate ticks. I could be wrong a little bit on the mechanics of the ticks, because it's not something everybody understands, and I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on those. But the important thing to know here, disregarding all the tick nonsense, is you need to keep your warp preparation time under one second. If you can keep it under one second, and then fill out the rest of your lows with uh, hit point boosting modules, you'll be perfectly fine. And of course, you don't really need your high slots and your mid slots. This ship is going to be carrying your valuables completely AFK from one place to another. If you go, to be honest, the way I see it, if you fit high slots and mid slots to this ship, you might feel a little bit too tempted in certain cir circumstances to take a fight that you know you really shouldn't, given the nature of what's in your cargo hold. So I just leave those blank just to avoid any form of temptation. And uh, of course, we can see on this screen right now my current defense hit points and uh, the resistances, as it were. Um, you'll notice I have a bit of, hole, bit of a hole in my EM resistance. That's because of me tanking to the specific exploit that I alluded to earlier. But next up, so we've got our interceptor frigate. We've got our fittings, we've started moving things, but what about maxing out our cargo hold? So as we can see at the moment on my inventory screen, 
I have currently at the point at this point in time 1507.4 cubic meters of storage space on my Atron 2 interceptor. Now the Atron 2 interceptor is the most popular interceptor for AFK hauling among players. Uh, the reason behind this is of course it is the most uh, it is the most um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's the highest tech level interceptor uh, available to Galente. And Galente are the faction that tend to have the higher cargo holds as a whole. Now, of course, if you're not a Tech 10 player and you're a lower tech level, if you've unlocked the regular Atron Interceptor, take that one as well. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. And of course, when you eventually reach Tech 10, you can upgrade to this one. And when you do that upgrade, you can bring along with it your Nano Core. So we'll talk about the Nano Core now. Um, oh yeah, it is worth just quick backtrack here. It is worth pointing out that there are rigs, for those of you that are unaware, uh, cargo hold optimization rigs for improving the cargo size of your ship. In fact, I figured I'd just put that out there because I think I skipped past that way back on the fitting screen. But anyway, back to the nano core. Yes, these are really, really unstructured if you, <laughs> if you haven't figured it out already. But uh, yeah, I'm having a blast doing these. So the nano core. If, during a particular event, you come across the Atron Ascension Core as a event reward, or maybe you see it in the Concord Pass, see if you can get it. See if you can, because at this point in time, it is the only Nano Core that I've observed to have multiple bonuses towards the cargo hold capacity. As you can see from my primary bonus, I have a 18% cargo hold bonus. And that's without having to train up any special attributes and perform any rerolls. Also, further down, I've managed to unlock another plus 4.88%. As time goes on, if I find myself with enough nanocore materials to waste on the Atron 2, I might just push that even further. But um, at this point in time, it's settled there. Now, there is one more method of improving your cargo hold space. But this one is particularly expensive, let's say, because it involves implants. The mining implant, if you can get it up to level 30, which will be quite costly, and I don't expect anybody listening to this tutorial to go out of the way to, to get that to level 30 exclusively for an Atron 2, because that would be silly. Yes, silly. <laughs> but uh, you can get another 20% bonus to your ship's cargo hold from the mining implant. Um, if I had to guess, the cost of doing such a thing outside of getting the implant itself would probably be in the realm of about 30 billion-esque. So um, don't do it unless you really, really, really do have the money to waste on it. But uh, anyway, that's uh, today's tutorial on uh, AFK cargo scepters. So uh, anyway, thanks for listening to the video. Um, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. Uh, if there's anything I missed, feel free to comment that in the section below as well. And see you guys in the next video.